I'm going to show you one of the worst losses I've ever had. I've lost six games in a row, and I want to show you the fact that maybe you can avoid my losses. This is 57%. Imagine if I got this in a test. This absolutely sucks. Part one, I'm going to show you this dreadful loss, and in part two, I'm going to show you my comeback. It starts off bad, but hopefully this video ends up good. Maybe? Stick around. Let me show you. Yikes. This is an absolutely awful game. Here we go. Here we go. So I have the black pieces. Now the point is, I'll go through the game, look at the mistakes, so then you don't have to make the same mistakes I do. We have the King's Indian defense, and my opponent plays bishop to f4. So it could be a London system. It could be a Horbava. Now my opponent wants to strike in the center, so the natural way is to ignore it. Nope, you do not do that. You're just giving white everything exactly what they want. Let's go back a bit. So I play d5. Now there's pressure here later. Queen d2. My opponent wants to play bishop to h6. With this kind of move, my plan is to strike in the center later. Now I'm a little bit worried about this move. Already this is my first mistake. Key moments, I'm going to show clearly all these top moments so you don't make these mistakes in your, go in your own game. I played a6, just to stop the knight coming into b5. Silly. Silly, I'm, I'm scared of nothing. I'm scared of ghosts. I am scared of a ghost that doesn't exist. It's only a ghost in my own mind. I can actually strike in the center. The reason I was a bit scared of the knight coming in here to forking my king and rook, but I've actually got this counter strike. Hit the queen if it moves, and now check. Hitting both. Hitting both, and this is already a great position. Here, c4. Hitting. This, and then taking. Let's go back a little bit. So already, this is one ghost. Let's have a look. a6, bishop h6, classic move from my opponent. You want to swap off bishop, which is exactly what I did. But now I can't castle, so already this is my second mistake. This is actually one good move I made in this game. Strike in the center, my opponent castles, I take in the center, and now queen out to b6. Already my third mistake. Why am I getting out of queen early? I'm trying to put pressure on this knight. I should go here. So if this capture happens, then at least I'm building up my center. But this is no good. This is the third, fourth mistake already. No wonder I got 57% on my scorecard. This absolutely sucks. So already, why striking the center? I can't castle. I really hate the decisions I've been making so far in this game. Now my queen comes out to b6. Striking in the center already, this is a bad principle. So mistake number four. I need to play a move like knight c6, so then this capture might happen. I'm protecting my center. Even this might be better, but no. This is so awkward. I really hate the fact that I took that bishop. If we go back here, really, I should have just castled. Here, castle. Take, take, and then play this type of position. I'm just afraid of ghosts. Here, I can stop. Something like this. And then the game goes on. I'm seeing ghosts that do not exist. Now back to the game. I strike in the center, take, queen out, and now strike in the center, and my position is falling apart already. That is under attack, under attack, I can't castle, what's the point? What is the point? Knight c6, I defend the center, but then my opponent takes. Queen g7 is actually a winning move, just hitting both. That's the fifth mistake already, in as little as 12 moves. Total disaster, but hopefully at the end. I'm going to show you a really, really cool victory because we all deserve a comeback. Take, take, bishop here, and my opponent hits the rook. Great move. That was my plan. And now my opponent should drop the rook back. Taking is even fine, you see. You can actually give this up. You can actually give this up, and then my opponent actually blunders. Take back with the queen, and this is still okay for white. I know I've got two rooks, but my opponent has two pawns for the rook. The bishop can come out pretty soon. White is doing okay. If I go back a few moves, take, take, take. 
That's a blunder. I actually miss a chance. So this is moment number six. Oh, my microphone is so heavy, but I have to hold it to my mouth or else the volume is just too low. Queen A5 is my missed chance. Moment number six. If I play this move, I am threatening checkmate and taking this pawn. My opponent has to play this tragic looking move. If we bring the knight back, then I take. And then there could be a check. And it's looking good. So really, so far my opponent has played one bad move. Let's go back. Rook c8. Bishop d3. I take that pawn, which is just such a random pawn to take. But I thought, well, just like anyone who's ever played any move. I play a move because I think it's good. Hmm. Queen here, still a chance missed. Hitting both. It's not mate anymore due to the rook. Let me see. Where's my next blunder? Moment number seven. Here's my chance to just try and come back. I can actually offer a queen trade. Hmm, I didn't. don't think I saw this before. Queen to f6, offering a trade. Now that the queens are off, uh, I think the danger is uh, going. f4 and then maybe the rook can come to d8. And here I am winning. So not only that, I missed my chance. Yeah, this is an awful game. Let's have a look. You won't believe, but a few moves later, I think I just lost. I thought I was being clever with this move, but my opponent has an absolutely brilliant move trying to checkmate. So I'll give you guys 10 seconds. The knight and the queen threaten mate on f7, but the bishop still defends it. Can you see an absolutely brilliant move for white? The cool thing is he missed it, but the engine does not. I'll give you guys 5 seconds from now. Bishop c4 is an absolutely stunning move. It's not just this. The rook can actually come in. So if I take, then check is almost mate. If I go back, I lose the rook and it's mate. If I go forward, that's mate. Here, here, where's the mate? King here should be mate pretty soon. That one. Or squares cover. That's such a cool move because then the rook actually defends the pawn. That is checkmate. Mate. Mate. Let's go back a little bit. My opponent missed it, but this is a three minute game after all. Bishop to c4. No, he went king b1. I, I missed my chance. He misses a chance, so do I miss. So I also miss a chance. This is called a mutual blunder. Rook d8, blunder. Now he sees it. He actually just takes the bishop because I thought I was being really clever because I hit the rook. I thought I was hitting this, but you see, the knight's defending it. And the queen defends it, so I'm missing everything in this dreadful game. But that's why I'm presenting it to you. So, we start off with a terrible game, and then it should be really good. A really good game coming up. Rook d2. Rook c5. You see my queen is defending that pawn. My opponent now plays a cool move. Bishop to c4. He now sees this move, and it's over. That is actually mate. I think I just lost on time here, but yeah, he can have mate. Yeah, one of the worst games I've ever played, as you can see, 57%. So first, I decide to lose, what was it, six, eight games, as you can see from this graphic. Now, time to turn it around. It's not good when you lose. Okay, comeback time. Let me show you this really cool game. I have the black pieces on Lee Chess again. We have the queen's gambit accepted. I take the pawn and now control the center. In these kind of positions, white gets the pawn back really quickly. Take and now a6. What's the point of this little pawn move? b5, c5. Very nice way to set up with black. Very healthy way to play. Strike in the center. Knight c6. Now I can go b5 first. Oops, not that far. That's not how pawns move. <laughs> b5, hit the bishop, but I went knight c6 first, rook d1, good move, so I hit anyway, now he just takes the pawn, it doesn't matter, if he was planning this, I was going to go take, 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 and then play this kind of position, that was the plan going forward, now in this moment, he, my opponent just takes, so then we have a rook hitting the queen, it moves out the way, and then take, here we go, it is move 11, I'm going to win in four moves, that's how cool this game is, and that's why I wanted to show you. I lose six games, but I win this cool miniature. 
that just means a really fast game. My opponent strikes on the left. Okay, so I just get space. The problem with this kind of move is really this is a classic maneuver in the Queen's Gambit. White tends to get this square for the knight. Because in this position here, you cannot go to your normal square. So the knight actually has a different home. Now you can go here, but then I just leave the pawn. So I don't really need mm, to attack this knight because I'm inviting. I am inviting the knight right in the center. A capture can happen, and this bishop is brilliant. Let's just go back a few moves. This is not the game. My opponent strikes in the center. On the queen side, I mean. B4. E4 strikes, and now a really cool move. I'll give you guys 10 seconds. That's how these videos are going to work. I'm not just going to give you the answer, but I will show a timer. You can pause the video now or just wait 10 seconds. I'm going to show you anyway. Can you see a really cool move here for black just to attack a weakness? This pawn move looks really good trying to attack the knight. Not only that, getting the bishop in the game, but there's a new weakness. This bishop attacks f2. So knight to g4, hit. Hit this pawn. And you might be thinking, well, there's, there's actually a couple ways to defend it. That is a very, very ugly way to defend. Take, take. And this bishop is incredible. Double pawns are very, very ugly. This is a wonderful position for black. Let's go back a tiny bit. What's another way to defend? Well, that is actually the move played in the game. And then I'll show you a really cool winning tactic. A very nice way to finish a terrible session. Rook goes back to f1. That's the other way to defend. And now I'll give you guys 10 more seconds. Can you find the winning move? Here's the clue, guys. Here is the clue. That's checkmate. Not yet. Can you see the winning move? Pause the video now, or I'll just give you guys five seconds. This is called removing the defender. This is one of the most common tactics. The white knight is defending this pawn. You need to just play a move, so then this knight is no longer defending the pawn. Knight to d4, game over. And then my opponent took the knight, I'm attacking both, and then checkmate on here. Just want to show you, if you move the queen out of the way, it's the same thing. Check. And then the queen comes in. That is checkmate. So in the real game, what actually happened was knight d4, take, and then checkmate. Really, really cool pattern. Just want to show you the best move for white here to stop checkmate is... You just need to go g3, and then you lose the queen. Yeah, you've got to block the diagonal, so that's the best move. But then you are just down a queen for a knight. So there we go, guys. There we go. Thank you so much for watching until the end. Why does it suck so much for you and me to analyze our chess losses? Because you feel you're not good enough. You're not the only one. I had a pointless evening. Six losses in a row. It sucks. It really sucks. But I hope you've learned from my mistakes, and I hope you've enjoyed a turnaround. The fact that I won a very nice game in 14 moves at the end. Thank you so much for watching until the very end. If you guys want to stick around, I have a couple of very nice videos on the left. See you next time.